On the basis of our life experience, we know that all of them are chairs. We interpret our perceptions and experiences. Now, why am I telling you all this, you may ask? Because cars have not been able to interpret very much so far. For example, if an autonomous driving vehicle is programmed to strictly obey the traffic laws, it will remain standing behind a car that is double parked. It will probably stay there forever. It will never lose its patience. It will never cross the white line. By contrast, we human beings are not always very good at obeying the rules, but we are capable of learning. A truly intelligent car needs both capabilities. It must obey the rules, and it must also be able to reach its own conclusions and make its own own decisions. We will teach our cars, cars both of these capabilities every step of the way. And the data that are gathered in road traffic are immensely valuable for this process. When hundreds of thousands of networked cars are on the road in the not-so-distant future, they can train one another thanks to swarm intelligence. We are taking the, new, the next step in this direction with the new E-Class. Not only can it follow the vehicle ahead of it at a speed of 210 kilometers per hour, it also parks itself in narrow spaces, changes lanes independently, recognizes pedestrians and cross traffic, and brakes automatically in emergency situations. The new E-Class is also the first, the world's first serious produced vehicle with car to X communication. In other words, the E-Class shares information with other cars and with the infrastructure. It's like the red car you see in front of you. This connectivity creates fantastic possibilities for the future of mobility, not only for cars, but for other systems as well. For example, it will enable us to organize the transportation of products and materials more effectively. Truck transport is the backbone of the world economy. In Europe, trucks are responsible for three quarters of domestic freight transport. And the volume of world tran worldwide transport is increasing. It could treble by 2050. However, the logistic, the logistics network is not capable of handling this increase. There are too many empty runs and too much time is lost during loading and unloading in traffic jams and at parking lots. One reason for that is the lack of real-time information. The connector truck can provide us information. This will significantly increase the efficiency of road freight transport. In the future, the connector truck will identify wear and tear on its own at an early stage and make appointments with the workshop. Moreover, the cargo capacity of trucks can be used much more efficiently. Platforms for ride sharing have been in existence for quite a while. In the future, there will be platforms for matching up freight with the available cargo capacity. And if connected trucks and cars and sharing traffic information in real time, the infrastructure can also be used much more efficiently. That will result in less time lost, lower emissions, and greater safety. Daimler is the driving force behind this development. We have been offering telematic solutions on the market for the past 15 years. We've already connected more than 365,000 vehicles all over the world with Fleet Board and Detroit Connect. We are now expanding this business. By 2020, we will invest about half a billion euros in connectivity for trucks. At the beginning of March, we became the first truck producer worldwide to send out a truck platoon on a German motorway. The term platooning refers to a group of several autonomously driving trucks that are connected with each other via Wi-Fi and thus can drastically reduce the distances between them on the motorway. What advantages does this bring? It improves aerodynamics and so reduces fuel consumptions. It improves safety and it creates space because three trucks driving as a platoon require only half as much space on the motorway as three trucks driving separately. That's why we want to develop this concept further. But it's not only a question of improving our products. Digitization is much more. It affects the whole entire value chain. Let's look at production. Many people are afraid of smart robots, and of course I understand that people with jobs in industrial production are wondering if the day will come when they are no longer needed. We think it won't. For example, on our assembly line automation 
has passed its peak. In some cases, we're even reducing our use of robots. That's because today we offer a wide range of models, versions, and options. That requires flexibility in our production processes. And that's where robots reach their limits. The experience, creativity, and flexibility of human beings will continue to be irreplaceable in auto production. Nevertheless, robots will continue to play an important role, but they will be in much closer contact with the human workers in the future. Today, a step in the assembly process can, as a rule, be carried out either by a human employee or by robots. In the future, robots and people will work hand in hand. That will enable both of them to contribute something. The cognitive superiority of human beings and the power and precision of robots. That's also look at the digital development process. In the 1970s, computer images with 1,000 pixels were a big deal. A decade later, that figure was 25 times greater. Today, we've got computer images with up to 80 million pixels. Consequently, we can precisely depict a new model as a digital prototype at an early stage of its development. So before a new automobile even gets close to our wind tunnel, it has already gone through many test runs as a data model. Nonetheless, we still rely implicitly on the toughest testing process of all, the passion of our development engineers. Not many of our customers will drive their Mercedes through a desert or across a frozen lake, but we will make sure that they could do so if they wish. As you can see, we're not giving up our own com uncompromising claim to top quality. I can promise you that in the future, a Mercedes will still be a Mercedes. But we will expand our core business step by step in order to make individual mobility more connected. In this area as well, a pioneering spirit will reap rewards. In recent years, we have substantially expanded our range of mobility services. Car2Go has become the world's leading car sharing company in a very short period of time. And people are using our Movil app to find and reserve the best transport connection between point A and point B. My Taxi is yet another component of this strategy. With the app, you can order a taxi and follow its progress in real time on your smartphone. You can also pay for the taxi via your smartphone. You receive the receipt by email. At the end of your ride, you can post an evaluation. Today, my taxi is being used in 40 cities all over Europe, and the experience has shown that people who have used it once generally become regular users. The number of rides tripled in 2015 alone, and it looks as though the trend will continue. Three weeks ago, my taxi became a partner of Google Maps in Germany and in Spain. Customers in those two countries who are planning a route will now receive information about how long a taxi ride needs to travel this route and how much costs. This app will benefit the drivers by bringing them additional customers. All in all, my taxi is not a threat to the taxi business, but rather an opportunity because a taxi is important to us, and taxis and Mercedes simply belong together. Another example of future growth is a long-distance bus business. The liberalization of bus transportation in Germany in early 2013 established a completely new market in a matter of months. Last year, long-distance buses transported a record number of over 20 million passengers in Germany. As the leading bus manufacturer, we took advantage of this development from the very start, and it has paid off. 55% of long-distance buses in Germany come from Daimler. Ladies and gentlemen, at the beginning of my research, I spoke of a basic orientation of our company. This orientation cannot be simply decreed, but it can be encouraged, and I would like to briefly talk about that in my conclusion. When I ask newly employed young colleagues how they feel about Daimler after the first few months, they often say, Daimler is a great employer. That's true, of course. And when they're asked for details, they sometimes say two things. Firstly, there are some things that don't really need to exist, such as certain hierarchies or coordination loops or many of our rules and pres prescribed processes. We're absolutely determined to change that. We're taking a critical look at the aspects of our corporate culture that still unnecessarily slow us down. For example, it's time to establish a new leadership culture, and that will begin with a new approach. 
The momentum will come from a team consisting of international colleagues from all of our units and all levels of our hierarchy. Our hierarchical structure, our meeting culture, and our methods of evaluating performance, all of this will be closely examined. The only parameter for this process will be that there are no parameters. I look forward to seeing what future opportunities will create this for Daimler. However, from my perspective, there's one area for our corporate culture where there's no need for change. And that's the second point that is often made by new colleagues in particular. The thing that more than compensates for all of the challenges is the opportunity to work together with incredibly talented and committed people. And this commitment goes far beyond people's jobs. For example, the head of transport logistics at our plant in Untertürkheim drives a truck for the aid initiative Starcare. The donations collected by this aid initiative um, benefits charitable projects in the region. A colleague from our technology factory in Sindelfingen works on educational and health projects in Nepal. And many of our colleagues are helping to meet one of the biggest challenges facing us today helping refugees who are coming to us in large numbers. I know there are different opinions about this challenge, but all of us agree that we have to eliminate the causes of this crisis and help people where they live. That's why we recently sent off the fourth Daimler aid convoy for Syrian refugees. That convoy, which carried 250 tons of relief supplies, arrived in southern Turkey just a few weeks ago. In Germany, we launched a preparatory internship program last November in order to create a smoother path for refugees into the labor market, and it's working. Almost all of the participants found jobs at the end of the program. This success is <coughs> as well due to the commitment and hard work of our colleagues. And just like you, I'm very proud of that. Because the values we create at Daimler is based on the values that we share. Ladies and gentlemen, the headlines we're seeing about Daimler today are overwhelmingly positive and they are justified by our business results. That means it's now even more important for us to stay hungry. In the past, we had a tendency at Daimler to sit back and relax after an especially successful phase. But today, things are different. We know we will still have quite a few things to do. We want to put Mercedes in the lead again by 2020, at the latest. We are much closer to that goal today than we were four or five years ago. At the same time, we are still working hard on the structural optimization of our business processes. The changes in our corporate culture are at least as important. Our mission remains unchanged. 130 years ago, we invented the automobile. Today, we are forging ahead with this reinvention. And in order to do that, we are also reinventing ourselves. I look forward to your continued support as we are moving along this path in the future. Thank you very much.